Chapter Five of Among the Meadow People. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Claire. Among the Meadow People by Clara Dillingham Pearson. Chapter Five. The Ant That Wore Wings. In one of the ant hills in the highest part of the meadow were a lot of young ants talking together. I said one. I'm going to be a soldier and drive away anybody who comes to make us trouble. I try biting hard things every day to make my jaws strong so that I can guard the home better. I, said another and smaller ant, want to be a worker. I want to help build and repair the home. I want to get the food for the family and feed the ant babies and clean them off when they crawl out of their old coats. If I can do those things well, I shall be the happiest, busiest ant in the meadow. We don't want to live that kind of life, said a couple of larger ants with wings. We don't mean to stay around the ant hill all the time and work. We want to use our wings, and then you may be very sure that you won't see us around home any more. The little worker spoke up. Home is a pleasant place. You may be very glad to come back to it some day. But the ants with the wings turned their backs and wouldn't listen to another word. A few days after this, there were exciting times in the ant hill. All the winged ants said good-bye to the soldiers and workers and flew off through the air, flew so far that the little ones at home could no longer see them. All day long they were gone, but the next morning when the little worker, whom we heard talking, went out to get breakfast, she found the poor winged ants lying on the ground near their home. Some of them were dead, and the rest were looking for food. The worker ant ran up to the one who had said she didn't want to stay around home, and asked her to come back to the ant hill. No, I thank you, she answered. I have had my breakfast now, and am going to fly off again. She raised her wings to go, but after she had given one flutter, they dropped off, and she could never fly again. The worker hurried back to the ant hill to call some of her sister workers and some of the soldiers, and they took the ant who had lost her wings, and carried her to another part of the meadow. There they went to work to build a new home and make her the queen. First they looked for a good sandy place on which the sun would shine all day. Then the worker ants began to dig in the ground and bring out tiny round pieces of earth in their mouths. The soldiers helped them, and before night they had a cosy little home in the earth with several rooms, and some food already stored. They took their queen in and brought her food to eat and waited on her, and she was happy and contented. By and by the ant eggs began to hatch, and the workers had all they could do to take care of their queen and her little ant babies, and the soldier ants had to help. The ant babies were little worms or grubs when they first came out of the eggs. After a while they curled up in tiny, tiny cases called pupa cases, and after another while they came out of these, and then they looked like the older ants with their six legs and their slender little waists. But whatever they were, whether eggs or grubs, or curled up in the pupa cases, or lively little ants, the workers fed and took care of them, and the soldiers fought for them, and the queen mother loved them, and they all lived happily together until the young ants were ready to go out into the great world and learn the lessons of life for themselves. End of chapter 5 Recording by Claire